Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this, the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are united together in both person and with online members. Our mass intentions for this liturgy would be for the deceased Steve Genovese and Leonardo Flores. So a couple of reminders for this present today. Please follow the guidelines from our volunteer ushers so we can maximize seating space and after bass, please exit the building, maintaining social distance. Today's Mass is being streamed live. For our online assembly, you can find the song sheet for today's Mass in our worship guide and on the resources page of our website. From home, you can sing along. It's time to get creative. Design a logo for Ascension's upcoming 50th anniversary and enter our logo contest. Entries are due November 16th. Please see our website for details. The Sacrament of Reconciliation will be offered Saturday, October 31st from 10 a.m. till noon. Now, due to the Eucharistic Congress, which will be next, oh, I'm sorry, on Saturday, November 7th, reconciliation will be celebrated from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. We're now going to show you a short video to explain more about the Eucharistic Congress on November 6th and 7th. Hello, my name is Father Sean Prince, and it's my privilege to serve as the director of our Diocesan Office of Worship, as well as the priest secretary to Bishop Nestow. Throughout this past year, our diocese has been celebrating a historic moment, our bicentennial, making the Diocese of Richmond one of the oldest in the United States. The culmination of our bicentennial is our upcoming Eucharistic Congress, the first in our diocese, scheduled to take place on November 6th and 7th. For many of us, this may be our first experience of this kind. And so, in light of such, I'd like to offer a brief explanation of this important church practice. The first Eucharistic Congress was held in France in the late 19th century, and the practice was soon adopted throughout Europe and the rest of the world. A Eucharistic Congress is a gathering of the church with a specific twofold purpose. First, to promote and strengthen our awareness of the centrality of the Eucharist in the life of the Church. The Congress is an invitation to pause and reflect on our own relationship to this essential mystery of the Christian faith. Christ is fully present to us in the sacrament of bread and wine. How can I deepen my understanding of this? What does this mystery mean to us today? And how do we shape our lives around this truth? The Congress focuses the lens of prayer and reflection on this great mystery of faith. The second purpose of a Eucharistic Congress is to strengthen our commitment to the social dimension of this sacrament. Our encounter with Christ flows out from us into the world. Pope Benedict XVI wrote in his encyclical, The Sacrament of Charity, it is precisely this personal encounter with the Lord that then strengthens the social mission contained in the Eucharist, which seeks to break down not only the walls that separate the Lord and ourselves, but also and especially the walls that separate us from one another. A Eucharistic Congress can be seen as a station on the pilgrimage of faith, a time of retreat and reflection. Let us allow this time to be an invitation to recenter our lives on the Eucharist this great mystery of love, and to help us to find creative ways to serve others, to heal divisions, and to build the unity of Christ's church. Stop. 
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends, today we celebrate the 30th Sunday in the ordinary time. Today I'd like to invite you to be thankful for the gift of faith. To be thankful for the gift of your family. Because our message today is all about love. And we are called to love tenderly, to love unconditionally, and to act justly, and to walk humbly with God and others. Dear friends, we know that we are human beings. But sometimes we fall short of fulfilling this message of love. And because we are gathered here to celebrate this Mass, let us be open and ask for God's love and mercy so that he can continue to guide us and give us strength. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with a sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only one covering he, for he, only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the first reading is, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praised be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior, you who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. Receiving the word in great affliction, with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Lord 
be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest in the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, first of all, I would like to recognize the presence of Bridget Pascoe and her brother, father, for coming for this Mass today. <clears throat> and I would like to congratulate Bridget for her achievement, for the success, for graduating for the LEMI program. She undergo for four years training, and today the bishop has commissioned them to start the work of proclaiming the good news for what they have learned. And for that, I would like to say congratulations, Bridget. <laughs> But I would like to invite you also, all of you, for those who would like you also to learn more about uh, theology with this uh, program of the LEMI and the other programs for our faith journey. Please come forward, and Bridget will guide you and lead you to the way you can be successful. And today, I would like to share with you my joy that my young brother, Anthony, for more than 12 years, I've been trying to help him to come up to his decision to get married, and today he got married, so thank you. <laughs> Dear friends, our readings today are so powerful if you really go and ponder in your journey of life. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Is there more to say? There are stacks of books in our libraries about God and what it means to be a good person. But it all comes down to this. Am I loving? Jesus makes it very clear. The gospel is not a doctrine. It is a way of life. The gospel is the good news. The gospel changes our way of life. The gospel brings us together. The gospel unites us. The gospel also heals us. And that's why I said in the beginning that we are called to love tenderly and unconditionally and to act justly and to walk humbly with God and each other. Today I want to share with you my personal story, which I have not even shared with you since I came here more than seven years. And how it comes, I don't know. And I was asking myself, why this story today? I don't know, the Holy Spirit. 
when I decided to go in the seminary, I was 14. And in the minor seminary was not in our diocese. It was for another diocese. So I had to travel by train for more than 12 hours. Think for a young man, 14. And it was the first time to travel. So I went there. When I arrived at the gate or the entrance of the seminary, I saw three seminarians, they were coming like cheers, trying to welcome me. So I was happy and say, oh, now I've entered the seminary. So they took my stuff, the bags and everything. So they started escorting me, going where I was expecting. That's the place where they wanted me to show. But to tell you the truth, that was a seminary. They took me straight to the restroom. And they put the stuff there, and they said, this is where you'll be start, stay, residing. I was surprised. Restroom? And that's the place I can put my stuff? No, I knew that now I've entered in the wrong way. So I took my stuff, and then I started looking for another place to go. Another three seminarians came, and they were asking me if they can help me. Those ones, they took me straight to the dormitory. The next day, someone we were just sitting, eating, and then after we finished eating, we had to go outside to start cleaning the plates and everything. So they brought five plates, and they say, go and clean the plates. Mm, I say, is this a seminary or what? For three weeks, I was not happy with this situation. I was in tears. I was asking, what kind of life? And one day I was in a class with my classmates. I started asking themselves, have you also experienced the same problem? And they say, yes. I said, how are we going to, to be uh, enjoy with this situation rather than being molested in that situation. They say, we don't know. I say, no, we have to discuss ourselves. These seminarians, they are also aspiring to become priests. And we also, the same thing. Why are they treating us in this situation? And we came to realize that they were saying that because themselves also, they were treated at the previous year with the others. So they are doing, so it has become like a, a, a routine, a culture. I said, no, that's not the way. For me, I've come, I want to become a priest. So I told them, how are we going to make the difference? So we started discussing and everything. We said, this is wrong. This is unacceptable. We have to do something. But we said, we are not going to fight with them, but we are going to tell them that what they are doing is not right. So we used to work together as a group, five, seven. And if someone is trying to intimidate someone, we were more than five. So he was not a, in a position to do that. So later, we decided to say, from now on, we are not going to allow anybody to torture or to harass anybody because we have come to experience the bad thing to us. And that's what it happened. And the life in the seminary changed. And those who followed us, they came and experienced a different life. What I want to say to you today, life is a journey. And the first reading today gives us the very important message. God is telling the Israelites, don't forget where you came from. 
Don't forget the life which you experience in Egypt. And don't treat others the way we don't want you to be treated. Dear friends, our message today is all about love. Our message today is all about love. Love, love. How are we going to do it? We have to begin where we are, as we did we in the seminary. St. Paul reminds us that we can combat evil by doing good things. Revenge, anger cannot help us to do. But what we can be for achievement is love. Dear friends, I want to tell you that our life always is a life of journey. But in order to respond for Jesus' message, we are called to love one another. And that's why in the second reading today, St. Paul, he's telling the community for what they have responded after receiving the gospel that they responded to the message of Christ by being together as a community, by loving one another, by accepting their differences, but also recognize each one's differences. We are here, we know that we are not on the same understanding. We differ even the way of seeing things, but still, the message of Christ today is telling us, love one another as you love yourself. I came from Tanzania. This year, in my country, they are doing also general election, and it's so hot. People are not talking to each other. I was sharing with Dick and Gary. One of my relatives, he's in the ruling party, the husband, and the wife, she's in the opposition party. So they are fighting each other. They don't even talk to each other. And I told them that uh, politics will separate us, but remember, we have one common element. We are family. And because we are family, we have to listen to one another. We have to love one another to accept each one's differences and continue to move forward. Because after the election, life has to continue, has to go on. Our differences in politics will not bring us love. But what we are supposed to do today is to continue to recognize one another, to listen to one another. And that's the message of Christ, love, love. Let us go today and do what Jesus entrusted us, to love tenderly and unconditionally, to act justly and to walk humbly with God and others. In doing that, we fulfill the mission Christ has entrusted us. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm also with you. I wish you all the best and may God bless you as you are preparing yourselves for the general election. May God bless you all. Thank you. Please stand. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Jesus taught us, we come to God with confidence, bringing our concerns for the church and the world. For the church, Pope Francis, our bishops and clergy, that they may continue to guide and lead us in the full presence of Jesus as we await the second coming of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world and local leaders, may they listen to the conscience that God has given them and work for the common good of all people and our earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local community and its neighbors and its needs, that we would act as witness to the love and mercy of Christ, loving our neighbors as ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your comfort and healing to all who carry the cross of pain and suffering, especially those with COVID-19, to be restored to complete health. Especially Connie Avis, Jessica Bello, John Stevens. For those names in our bulletin, and for the names that we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, we ask that you welcome them into your eternal kingdom, especially Mrs. Caroline Nestout, mother of Bishop Barry Nestout, <laughs> Kathy Plasek, sister of Joe Burke. And for our weekend mass intentions, Stephen Genovese, Ronaldo Flores, William Zimmerman, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Living and true God, hear the prayers of your people, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear parishioners, we have continued prayers and thanksgiving for all your support, both spiritually and financially, to help keep the parish running. This is the time when the collection basket is passed around, which cannot happen in our current situation. For those present after Mass, the collection basket will be located at the center exit doors of the sanctuary. For those watching online, there is a link in the posted song sheet and in the comments section below for your use. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to adopt our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are clay. and to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, death O Lord, Lord, and, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring you a church, O oh Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Barry our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions 
to conform those who labor and are burdened. Make us save them truly after the example of Christ at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters, Steve Genovese and Reynaldo Flores, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in a communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil, evil. Gracious grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace, and we ask if you're watching us live stream to please put a note in the chat box. Thank you. Peace, Father. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sup of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As you come up to communion, if you would please make sure your mask is over your nose as well as your mouth. We ask you to keep social distancing coming up. Once you receive communion, if you would step over to the yellow dot to the side and actually consume 
uh, the Eucharist at that particular time. It'll help the flow. Thank you. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering to God. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Dick and Gary, I would like to thank you for your participation and also for your prayer. And for those who are watching live stream masses, I want to say also thank you for your participation and for your prayers. But in a very special way, I want just to remind you that those seminarians who were always trying to put us on that situation, three of them, they are priests, and they belong to my diocese, and we are friends. <laughs> <laughs> so you can understand the, the words of God always. My ways are not your ways. What we need always to pray and ask God's power, God's healing to continue to move forward. You don't know what God is going to do in your life. Maybe he has commissioned you to be a reconciler in one of your brothers and sisters in your life. Be available and make use of your own time and make use of your own talents for what God wants you to go. He can lead you and do it with love and do it with peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Good week.